I've honestly never been so conflicted on my opinion of a product in my entire life. This is the Zima Blade, the spiritual successor to the Zima board that I've so finally talked about in quite a few of my videos. Zima Blade comes in at a smaller size, but packs a slightly better processor. You do lose the dual NICs that came with the Zima board in favor of a single one gigabit NIC. This trend continues as we see the same with the USB 3 type A ports. I mean, the blade does come with these goofy little USB 2.0 ports, but 99% of people aren't using those. However, we now get a USB-C port for power, data, and display, which is great. The SATA and PCI expansion hasn't changed. We still get the PCIe 2.0 4X slot and dual SATA ports bookending that awkward SATA power plug. For display out, it would appear that yet again nothing has changed as both have mini DisplayPort 1.2 plugs. You also notice that under the hood we have what I think is the most important change, upgradable RAM. It's rocking a single SODIMM DDR3 slot that is capable of handling up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Wait, DDR3? Doesn't the Zima board have DDR4? Yeah. Again, we have a passively cooled device with a TDP at six or 10 watts, depending on which config you go with. And speaking of config, the Zima Blade comes in at $64 for the dual core version and $96 for the quad core. All right, those are the specs for the Zima Blade and the main comparisons to its predecessor. There were certainly upgrades like the USB-C port, the smaller, more usable form factor, upgradable RAM, and obviously the price. But there were also some downgrades like losing a USB and RJ45 port and the slower DDR3 RAM. Honestly though, if you ask me if I'd rather have soldered DDR4 RAM or upgradable DDR3 and a low power device like this, I'd probably pick the upgradable DDR3. The ports are harder to justify. I mean, unless you're running this as a firewall, you may not care about losing an RJ45 port. And maybe you don't care about losing a USB port, but I kind of like those. So you're probably thinking, Brett, it sounds to me like you actually like the Zima Blade. What's the problem? Well, you're kind of right. I think this is a solid little device. It's affordable, expandable, and has enough horsepower to run plenty of services. Problem lies in the expectations. I love my Zima boards, but I had a few gripes with them. The PCIe slot is awesome, but maybe the measurements were slightly off since you have to remove the IO shield on any card or it'll scratch up the casing. A dual one gigabit NIC is great, but for version two, I would have liked to see 2.5 gig. And while it is a low power device, I definitely would like to see a more modern, more powerful chip like the N100. Yes, this would increase the price, so I get it. Well, Zimplay did none of that. The PCIe slot is still inconveniently placed. We actually only get a single one gigabit port now, and the processor used is barely an upgrade. While we do get upgradable RAM up to 16 gigabytes, you'll notice that I'm only running eight gigabytes. Why? Apparently 16 gigabyte sodium sticks of DDR3 are either impossible to find or are expensive as hell. So honestly, you're probably looking at eight gigabytes of RAM here. You can imagine with those expectations, then hearing Ice Whale was coming out with a new Zima blade, how I'd be let down, right? I heard that and thought, oh man, we are getting a cool low power 1U blade server device. Then they release what is almost like a Zima board light after like two years of the Zima board being out. If I wasn't already annoyed enough, they released it with some goofy ass hacker marketing as if this little box was designed for hackers. Like what? It's a mini PC guys. The Latte Panda Delta that I checked out a few months ago is way more of a hacker board than this. You can market it however you want though, but people are gonna use it how they see fit. And for the Zima Blade, I do actually think it's a fantastic low power home server. Since this guy has 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, it doesn't really let us do much in terms of virtualization. Sure, I could throw in a PCIe NVMe card and install Proxmox, but that takes away from the form factor and the simplicity here. So what we're gonna do is give their Casa OS software another try. I've tried this out probably every six months since I got my hands on my first Zima board like two years ago, and I'm always disappointed. Maybe today's finally the day that it gets me off. Yeah, no. This shit has been out for years and still doesn't have RAID functionality. Like you can merge drives together, but you can't mirror them. But wait. 
Turns out RAID is actually a recently released feature on ZMOS. ZMOS? What? There's another one? Yeah, apparently with the release of their Zima Cube, they're also releasing ZMOS, a completely different operating system, but with arguably a very similar UI. But it's still in beta, so I guess they have all these products, but couldn't put in enough time to make a production-ready interface. That shit's annoying. Whatever. I went into the Files app to create a folder and marked it as shareable, effectively turning this into a NAS using SMB. Now that we have a NAS on here, we are free to utilize the rest of our resources on things like a Minecraft server, Jellyfin, RStack, DNS server, Coaster, Frisbee, whatever you want. And the J3455 chip on here has Intel QuickSync enabled with HD505 graphics, giving us proper hardware transcoding up to 4K 8-bit using H.265. It's not going to be a workhorse or anything, but for a sub 10 watt chip, it's not bad at all. I mean, with the hardware acceleration, we can transcode a 4K video all the way down to 360p and only use up less than half of the actual CPU headroom. Check out what happens when I turn off hardware acceleration. Yeah. Running a Minecraft server on here also went pretty well. I mean, I was using a good bit of resources for a single server with a single user in it, but let's be honest, you don't have friends, so it's just gonna be you in here building out some of your favorite things. So I reiterate, this is not a bad device at all. It's honestly an amazing little machine with plenty of options for customization, all with a low power usage and a low price. I mean, when it's just chilling with two hard drives connected and serving up files, it uses about 20 watts. Then when it goes full tilt, it only hits 30. However, we can do so much better here. For the Zima Blade 2 or the Zima Spoon or whatever they call it, I have some things I'd like to see updated. Number one, upgrade the chip. We are seeing so many tiny PCs out now that are shipping with an N95 or even an N100, both much more capable and still extremely low power. Upgrading the chip also gives us access to DDR4 RAM as well as PCI Gen 4 or at worst Gen 3, which is still an upgrade from the Gen 2 on here. Number two, keep the PCIe 4X slot. Just move it a few millimeters, please. So many times, I just wanna plug in a card to test it out, but it won't fit with the IO shield, so I have to take it off, which leaves it kind of insecure and just dangling out of the slot. Moving the slot forward a bit and maybe adding a little groove to the case for the card to slot into would be fantastic. And number three, I like the form factor, I like the PCIe options. I don't like the lack of mounting options. I know you have talented designers over there. Just give us some design files for some little PCIe card brackets. I can guarantee you that more people would buy these if you can show it off not only being expandable, but also keeping its aesthetic while doing so. Yes, I know people, including myself, could just design our own, but like, I don't know how, and also, I don't want to. So if those things are implemented for the next version, I'll be fanboying so hard. Yes, I know the Zima Cube exists, but that's not what I want. That's a full-fledged computer designed to be used as a NAS for the most part and doesn't really excite me. The thing that drew me into the Zima ecosystem was the low power options with room for expansion. So that's what I'm here for. All right, well, that's kind of my review, I guess. I'm not really sure if I made any real points in this video, but this thing was sitting on my desk for months and I was tired of looking at it, so I wanted to get that off my chest. If you enjoyed this, why? But also drop a like. And if you really liked it, then please see a doctor and make sure to hit the subscribe button on your way there. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my low power Zima bros and I mean that in the best way possible. You guys are spectacular. If you're still watching, then you're DDR3. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.